everyone. Today we are very honored that we can invite Dr. Jimmy Chen here, the author of the Post Synergy, to have this one-on-one -on -one interview. Hello, Dr. Chen. Uh, hello. Hi, uh, hello, everybody. Good. Um, today uh, we are very happy that to invite you today so that we can uh, have a little interview with you. Mm -hmm. A lot of your students really want to know more about their master, really? um, such as how did you get into Chinese medicine and how and what you did to make yourself such a success in treating patients. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we know that um, you were actually the interior designer before you actually got to the Chinese medicine. Yep. What made you uh, decide to change the profession? Actually, I was a civil engineer. Uh, back in, in, in the college time, and I was doing some civil engineering construction work mm -hmm. and interior design afterwards a little bit before I become... Uh, there's a long, long way be between that, because that all started with the uh, with an accident. I was, I was riding my bike along the uh, street of Taipei City, and uh, I came across a very slippery road, and I fell down and hurt my knee, so I couldn't go to work for a couple of weeks. And at that time, my uh, classmate, the college classmate, he went over to my house and put some needles into my uh, my hurt knees. And at that time, I felt so good immediately. I can, I, I could get up and walk normally without much pain. And I feel so easy with a swollen knee. I, I bumped my knee on, on the road, on the pavement. So I, I was so fantasized with the Chinese medicine. I didn't know anything about that. So I asked him a lot about Chinese medicine. How did you learn your acupuncture? Where did you learn it? And uh, anyway, I can go to school. I mean, I can go to office any, anyhow. So I just stay home and I bought some books and, and the uh, acupuncture and study them. Um, I don't know. I didn't know anything about it. So I just study, study, and learn. And uh, after uh, after my my wound got better, so I. Asked my classmate to introduce me to uh, to to the master, and that's the time I start learning Chinese medicine. Oh, so where did you go to school? Which school, school did you go to? I didn't go to any school. <laughs> I learned from uh, self-teaching. Uh -huh. I didn't go. To, there wasn't any school in in Taiwan at that time. I see. So who's your teacher? But then? Uh, as for teacher, I mentioned that, that, that my classmate introduced me to his master. Actually, as for teacher, I learned everything from everybody. I learned something from you too. Everybody's my teacher. <laughs> I, learned, I learned from me how to smile, how to be nice to people. I was so mean to my patients. That's not good. <laughs> well, anyway, I learned everything from, I can learn from anybody. My patients, my students. Uh, my my uh, I can learn things from internet, uh, books, but it doesn't matter. My really masters, I had two good masters. First is that uh, that old gentleman is long long time ago. Actually, it's 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. I learned from acupuncture for him from him for a few months, and uh, the next teacher it was the the um, it's about several years later. I learned from. Uh, majorly, he introduced me to Huang Di Nei Jing and post diagnosis. I see. And they long gone, but uh, their image is still in my brain every day. I see. Yes. So throughout this year, um, how did you gain the experience? Yeah, yeah, that's patients? a good, that's a very good quick question. After learning from the first gentleman, you know, I spent about two hundred U.S. dollar to learn that uh, that course. For back, back then, 200 40 years ago. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very a big amount. Okay, anyway, after learning that, because at that time, there are not even any law to, con to control, to govern the doctors. This, you can, anybody can be a doctor without having a license. So we were, uh, after we learned from, from uh, that gentleman, we learned acupuncture, only acupuncture, not, not, not herbs or something. And uh, we have other teachers, they took us a bunch of them, to those um, you know old men house something those things those old patients actually they were abandoned by big hospital because their problem majorly is a stroke diabetes and they can't they can't even get off the bed some of them live in the on third floor of this so their their activities are very limited and their daily behavior is very difficult so my those teachers took us to their do the uh, acupuncture for them, 
actually we're practicing and, and helping them at the same time. And finally, some of the people can walk down three floors down for treatment after several months. So it's, uh, that put me in a very um, strong confidence that Chinese medicine, Chinese acupuncture really works. Because those patients are so, actually so, so, so poor and uh, abandoned by the big hospital, they, they, they can't do anything for them. We help them a lot with acupuncture treatment and uh, I gain a lot from them. And uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy I, we, we had that kind of experience. So according to what you just say, you actually learn acupuncture first. Yeah. Then why you uh, all of a sudden stop doing acupuncture and then s instead practice more herbal medicine? Uh, not actually stop. <laughs> it's because the patients become more and more. We don't have any time for that because they, mm -hmm. if you do acupuncture for a person, at least it take, uh, takes 30 minutes or something, and you have to ask them to come back uh, on and gone. On and on again, but uh, in Taiwan, people don't like needles. They hate needles, and even for this, like I always say in my in my seminar, if you treat a person with an acupuncture successfully, but his wife might not like the needle, his kids might not like needle, his parents might not like needles. So you're, in another way, business is limited. And when I uh, came back, I came down to America. This, this place is so big, you had, the patients live always so far away. You cannot ask him to come back to the office twice a week or something. It takes too much time for them, too much hassle and traffic. So I just totally change. Change is good. <laughs> change <laughs> change to, uh, to uh, using uh, herbs and formulas. I see. So in terms of using herbal formulas, uh, where, from where you derive your artistry with using herbs? Using herbs, well, the uh, the uh, it depends on the uh, the result, it's scientific or um, analyzed after the treat after the diagnosis. We have many many approaches of of uh, studying a case, a person's problem, a patient's disease, and after all that is done, we have to follow that 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 direction to use all the formula and herbs. But sometimes it comes from here as an inspiration, inspirational stuff. You get feeding. It's like a, it's not so scientific. It's a feeding at that time. For example, he's sitting in front of you talking about or whatever. Suddenly you have something pop up your your brains. Oh, this medicine, this herb is good for that kind of a uh, result. I see. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you think about the traditional use of classic formula? Hmm? and uh, traditional use of differential diagnosis? Uh, uh, that, of course, the traditional formulas are very, very good. I'm using it every day. I just use different combination of them. And uh, for the uh, different uh, differential diagnosis, it's only part of the uh, Chinese way of making approaches. I myself, I have at least 12 ways of analyzing the patient's problem. For example, if the patient, um, we, we do the uh, diagnosis first, yes. then we ask, okay, whatever the result, or we have an understanding of his problem, maybe he has a back pain or a headaches, or we, we have, I, I myself have 12 ways of analyzing his problem. It's very complicated. But I've been giving some of the information in my uh, seminar throughout the States. I've been teaching here in the United States about 13 years. So we do at least seven or eight seminars a year for this stuff. But some of them are too complicated. I haven't, I haven't reviewed them yet. I just use them every day. For the traditional way of making diagnosis, they always, in the, in the textbook, the, the, the normal and traditional way is based on the, the symptoms. They analyze your condition by your symptoms. For example, in Shanghan Lun, you're sweating, you're not sweating, you have joint pain, you have a vomiting, you have a diarrhea, whatever, then they get a conclusion of your problem, then they start uh, prescribing. But in my uh, experience of practicing, usually you cannot get those information from the patients.